Hey, Brad Lancaster here. I want to show you some real simple, easy uh, maintenance strategies uh, to do in street side water harvesting basins after a real good flow event. This will really enhance the performance of these systems. We've got three street side water harvesting basins capturing water. Water flow is really heavy. It tops the curb and flows all along here. Some uh, organic debris that was carried in the runoff has accumulated on the plants above the water line. So all this was planted just in uh, February of this year, so just like six months ago or so. And as a result, um, some of the plants are still lower than the uh, water line. So uh, we just um, brushed that off. Uh, a little more extreme here, got a native grass that's kind of covered with organic matter. So just simply come over here and fluff it up and the uh, organic matter that had covered it I can go ahead and just um, fall into the basin as a uh, free mulch it just came to us free of charge with the runoff flow it's one of the advantages uh, of these systems now you can see it's all um, uncovered and can now photosynthesize as it'll get the full um, benefits of the Sun here we've got a uh, western mugwort. Um, again, just shake the organic matter off of the bottom of it. It's all ready to go. The bulk of it was already pretty sweet because the majority of this plant's already above the, the water line. Okay, there's a giant sack tone grass that got pushed over and covered somewhat with some organic matter. back up now that looks great so as these plants uh, grow like this Arizona cotton it's really good and big now so no problem so the uh, the need for maintenance is reduced over time it's just key that you do this in the uh, early months after planting uh, when stuff is still small all right so it gets more resilient with time so this work is typically done by um, the adjoining uh, homeowner or uh, tenant to the installation. When we set these up, we ensure that folks understand what maintenance might be needed, and then uh, they agree to do that um, before we do the installation. Um, but this particular installation is on the north side of a public park, and um, the, uh, um, the park department isn't as on top of this as maybe they could be. I mean, they're pretty overstretched. So uh, I'm coming by and doing it. Um, other neighbors come and do it. They just haven't done it yet. So this is a chance for me to shoot this video. We've got a small jojoba, newly planted jojoba bush. It's gonna eventually get six feet tall, but um, it's starting to get encroached upon by this portulaca, a beneficial annual. Um, it's actually uh, edible, uh, though I wouldn't eat it when it's growing in these uh, street side basins. Um, but it's great wildlife habitat and so forth, uh, and it's a great living mulch. But um, right here where I'm pulling it, it was starting to encroach uh, on the jojoba and uh, block some of its sunlight. So that's why I pulled it. Now I'll just drop it back in here and it'll act as a um, is a mulch on the bottom of the basin and then here can you see how some of these leaves have gotten a little gray from the uh, Soot that was carried in the runoff. So I'm just gonna brush that off the leaves so they can better photosynthesize Okay, right here. We've got a little desert ironwood tree. It's eventually gonna grow to be 25 feet tall uh, But right now when it's small the lower part is getting some organic debris. This is a real um, thorny native tree. So I'm using this uh, stick, actually a piece of a palm frond that uh, I found in the basin. And uh, that makes it super easy to knock off the, um, the stormwater debris and whatnot. Now it's all good. And you know, just bring some gloves. That will work too. Okay, another little maintenance thing that needs to be done is uh, just on the inside of the storm water inlets. 
um, we had created these little basins that are meant to capture the bulk of the sediment before it gets into the larger basin. And we don't plant anything here, so it's really easy to just shovel this out. I don't want to toss that sediment just here or here, because in this particular site, so much water comes along here, it would just push it into the next basin. I'm going to clean that out right now. I'm going to put it into the neighbor's garbage can. They were cool to let me um, use it. And so I do this sediment trap cleaning uh, on the mornings of garbage pickup day, today being Wednesday. Okay, so um, I'm going to grab the shovel, clean this out, and then I will show you the after. All right, sediment traps all cleaned out now. Just put um, dirt in there. Uh, here's the key thing. There was already garbage in here. I just don't fill the garbage cans uh, more than about a third with uh, the dirt. That way the garbage folks don't have any problem taking it away. So key thing in here, um, hopefully you can see how this is now uh, depressed and it is lower than the bottom of the inlet. Okay, I want to have at least a two inch drop, three inches better. Here we've got um, uh, three inches. So that the water coming through the curb core speeds up as it drops in this little waterfall effect. And that way it will carry the sediment it's uh, um, carrying uh, rather than dropping it out. Because when you slow down the water flow, you reduce its energy and it drops out things that it's carrying. So this way we speed up the flow and then it drops it into the sediment trap. Okay, once the water comes through the curb core, drops into the uh, sediment trap, um, it pools. And as the water pools, it slows down and then the sediment drops out. And it pools because, I don't know if you can see it, we've got a little rock lip here, so uh, which is higher than the basin. And this is two to three inches lower than the bottom of that inlet hole, okay? If this spillway were higher, then the sediment that would accumulate in here would build up um, to the height of the spillway. And if that were higher than the inlet, it could clog it. So you gotta make sure this is lower than the bottom of that inlet, okay? Which is the case here. So um, now it's all good. We're ready for the next storm. And this was super easy um, maintenance. Uh, and the key is we want uh, the bulk of the sediment to accumulate here, and not in the main basin. And when I say sediment, I mean dirt, gravel, and so forth. I don't mind organic matter. Organic matter is great. That's the sponge, the spongy mulch that will quickly absorb water and create great habitat for beneficial soil life and help bioremediate toxins and so forth. It's the, uh, the dirt, the rock, the gravel, any garbage, that's what we want to get rid of. There's a lot of erosion that happens upstream here because of the amount of stormwater that comes along here. So uh, these installations are really helping um, heal and reduce that. So we've got a one rock dam, uh, rock mulch rundown hybrid. So one rock dam, it's only one rock high, tends to be about five courses wide. Um, and a rock mulch rundown, um, that is more on a slope. It's used to stabilize um, the, st the slope where the steepness increases and the velocity and energy of the water increases. And when the energy increases, its ability to carry things like soil increases so it can erode. Um, so we armor it with the rock. And then, I don't know if you can see, but it's a very subtle U shape here with this rock structure. So the bulk of the water flows over the middle and um, there's less depth on the sides. So there's potential for erosion is less on the sides. It kind of protects the curb and the sidewalk. All these details and way more in my book, especially Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands Beyond, volume two. Okay, so what this basically creates a um, grade control structure. So um, as long as all that rock holds, and it's key to do good rock work, um, then the, uh, it creates a level terrace of soil on the upstream side because the soil doesn't erode down below that level. But um, slopes going up, some of the soil um, above the structure has eroded. Some of that came in and created the sediment deposit. Um, but when we remove this sediment deposit, 
thing should be pretty good for future rain events because the bulk of that sediment source um, have been calmed by this structure. The dirt sediment, um, some of that that's accumulated right here, that um, we'll remove, but all this organic matter that's accumulated, this we will not get rid of. This is great. This is the, the mulch, the organic matter that we want and need to increase the health of the soil life. Um, and the more soil life we have, the more uh, that soil life is burrowing into the soil, creating more channels for the water to more rapidly infiltrate. And that organic matter helps um, this insulation hold on to the water much longer below the surface, not on top of the surface. So we don't have mosquito issues because all the water infiltrates in about an hour or less typically. All right, so it's stored subsurface where the mosquitoes cannot access it. That organic matter is also key to help bioremediate or naturally filter uh, and sequester um, any toxins such as heavy metals that might come off the road due to brake pads and stuff like that. Okay, here um, the native um, coyote gourd uh, vine, um, the water flow pushed some of that onto the sidewalk. So I'm just gonna move the part that's on the sidewalk back onto soil because one of the great things in drought adaptations of these is um, when these runners um, are growing along the ground, they'll actually set root down. So there'll be many root systems all along. So if it gets cut or broken, um, it's not a problem because uh, of thanks to all those many different root systems, the different pieces can grow and thrive on their own. The need to weed lessens more and more year after year as all this vegetation grows, the perennials we want, because they will then shade out um, potential weed growth. Um, but this is early uh, in the life of this thing, so there are some weeds. But there's beneficial weeds, which really aren't weeds, they're great things. So like this, this is a ground covering spurge, um, really high in protein, the goats love it. That one we keep, it grows really low, it doesn't get in anyone's way, so it acts as a living mulch and it will help deter um, more problematic weeds such as these exotic grasses, which came from the turf of the park, all right? Um, this is a more vertical spurge. Um, uh, my goats also love this. Um, I pulled this one just because it was growing amongst the native perennials that we planted and it was, you know, casting a little shade on them. So um, I'm trying to get them full sun right now so they grow a little more, they grow faster. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these exotic grasses. Now, this one's already gone to seed, so I'm going to throw it away. I don't want to use that as a mulch in the basin because I I don't want this grass I don't want it to reseed had it not yet seeded yeah I could throw it in there as a mulch and it'd be great now one of the advantages of doing this weeding is it really enhances your plant identification skills um, of the plants at all different stages of their life so this was a little seedling that came up from the seed mix we planted this is the desert marigold an awesome uh, native wildflower and so we left that while we weeded out uh, some non-native weed seedlings that were growing around it. As a result, we get this awesome um, desert uh, marigold, okay? And you get to see neighbors when you're doing this. So it helps build community because you talk, you get to know one another. Okay, so an advantage to doing the uh, the weeding is here, this is a seedling of the native uh, desert senna, okay? And uh, so I get to see it. Um, let's say I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's a weed or not. So I can leave it in place until it flowers. And then once it flowers, it's much more easy to identify the plant. Um, this way we don't accidentally remove something we want. So this is it at a seedling stage next to the beneficial living mulch spurge, okay? And uh, now let's look at it mature. So here is the desert senna, okay? Um, that it, it also started from a seedling. And since we did not weed it out, mm -hmm. we've got this great plant. And oh, did you see the native bee flying there? I hope that's coming out in the camera. Also really great for um, butterflies. And uh, these seeds, 
seed heads when they dry can shake it and it rattles. So some people call this plant a rattle box or rattle bush. Oh, more solitary bees coming in, loving this senna. See, you bring in good, good stuff brings more good stuff. And then they'll pollinate more plants and we'll get even more diverse species of good stuff. Please like and subscribe. And for more on all this, be sure to check out the full color editions of my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, which you can get a deep discount direct from me, my website, harvestingrainwater.com. You'll love them.